Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we are talking data quality. No? You're not as excited as I am? Oh, I love a bit of data quality. Well, that's what we're talking about. As always, Advancing Spark brought to you by Advancing Analytics, your friendly neighborhood engineering, AI, and analytics consultancy. Get in touch with us if you want Spark training or you need a lake house building, all of that good stuff. And as always, there's a Spark fans discount if you go to our online training portal, and I'll put a link down below. So, what am I talking about? Lake House Monitoring. Announced, well, announced back at the Data AI Summit in June. This is a whole way of saying, I've got Unity Catalog, I've got a lot of data in there. Can you just like tell me if the data gets worse over time? So not the same thing as Delta Live tables or using great expectations when I'm like plugging in things to my ETL. And every time I load data, I'm tracking the data quality. We're not doing that. We're gonna say, well, look, there's just some tables there. Can you like regularly look at the tables and tell me if they've changed? Are there more nulls? Is there a different distribution of categories? Am I getting some variance or model drift if I'm doing some kind of machine learning? That is what lake house monitoring is. So they announced it recently and now it's in preview. We can go and have a play. You're using Unity Catalog and you are in a serverless enabled region. You can go and see what monitoring is all about. And that is the plan for today. So. If it's your first time around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments how you got on with it. Are you using monitoring? Are you using something else to do data quality monitoring? And now you're like, well, I don't need that anymore. And then happy days. Yeah, we'll see. So that's the plan. Let's go and have a look. So first things first, you've got the, the spiel, the, the announcement. We had this lake house monitoring thing. They tell us about it. And it's all about features and ML models. So proactive reporting on top of your data and models, unified tooling from data to ML, root cause analysis of things break, which is crazy, really cool. Um, and there's a lot of people I spoke to, and I mentioned lake house monitoring is something coming, and they said, I thought that was just machine learning. That's just a, like a data science thing, right? That's not for me as a data person. And no, no. Yes, it does machine learning drift. Yes, it's looking at features, and if those features are still accurate, and if you should retrain your models. But it is also just doing straight standard. Is my data quality still good? Have I hit a data quality date that I wanted to avoid? That is actually what it's doing. So automated passive checks of data quality is what Lakehouse Monitoring is doing. And it's actually very cool. So that's out there. There's the docs now. You can go and read all the stuff it should do. Again, there's a subset of regions you can go and have a play with it. These are all the ones that have had service enabled for a while. Not in UK South yet. Sad times. Well, it might be. I've not actually tried. But for now, it is just in these regions. Uh, so I've got a little workspace and trying it on. So a few things it does. Lots of extra things it does. Blah, 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 blah. The main thing. Three different types of data quality checks it can do. It can be checking to say, hey, I've just got a, a snapshot of some data. Has it changed since my last snapshot? That's what I'm going to have a quick look at today. Uh, we can do time series data. If you've got like a whole series of data... It's all timestamped, and you can look at variance and anomalies over time. That's another one. And then inference more your ML classification, regression kind of things, looking at the output of a model and saying, has this drastically changed? So it depends what you're trying to actually predict. Um, and when you're doing the snapshotting thing, one of the things that has is this idea of a baseline table. So I can have my current delta table, and I can make a subset of that table and say, that's what good looks like. I normally have 3% nulls. I normally have a roughly even distribution of categories. That is my baseline. And then when it's doing its snapshotting, it goes, well, that's the current state of the table compared to the baseline. Whoa, it's way off. Things have changed. So that's a whole thing that we can do. We need to set this stuff up. There's then a load of extra things it does. It runs a ton of queries. It's currently taking me, I think, like so six, seven minutes for it to actually run and do all the DQ checks on one table that's about 60,000 rows. It's actually doing a lot of stuff in there because it's checking so many different dimensions of categories and distributions and individual column uh, statistics. So it's doing quite a lot in there and it'll save all of that down as additional metrics tables, as additional objects. You'll save all the queries into a space in your workspace. So it's doing lots of stuff. There's also a load of extra things you can do uh, around creating some alerts if DQ goes over a certain uh, threshold, doing a load of custom metrics you can do, having a look at those more ML side of things, tons of extra other bits and pieces you can do. 
For now, we are just going to do the basics. We're going to grab a table. I've set up a baseline table for that same table. I then ran a quick go and gather my data quality stats on it, inserted a load of Duff data, and then ran another snapshot. So we can have a look and say, well, what's happened over time? What do I actually see over time if things changed? That's That was me just having a test, having a play with this thing. So go and have a look. So I've got this sales orders table. Let's go and have a bit of a play. I can actually show you this thing I was playing around with. So I had this, I stole some sample data from some training that we're doing. Uh, and I came in and said, okay, I want to play with this. So grab from one of the Databricks data sets. We've got that kind of online retail data set, just some sales transactions. Just go and read that data. Take the first 500 rows, nice and clean. Save that as my table. So I'm just really lazy, saving it down as Unity Catalog Managed Table. It's inside Sales Silver. I believe in Lakehouse Monitoring, you can do, as long as it's Delta, you'll be okay. So managed or external is fine. Just, I was just lazy here and saved it as a managed table. So we've got those 500. I then made a quick copy of that same table and called it base because I need to have a separate table, which is my snapshot. This is what good looks like. Now you don't have to have that. It's just if you want your reporting, if you want your data quality metrics to have comparison, how far it's strayed away from a baseline, well, you need to save that baseline. It needs to know what the original good looked like. So I've done that. I've just saved a couple of rows down. Maybe don't feel like you have to do that for every single table in your entire data set. But maybe if you've got feature tables that you're feeding into ML, maybe you've got some real important tables that you want an another level of management on, then make a baseline table for it and then check how it's gone. So that was my original plan. I've then gone and made some dodgy data, but we'll go and have a look at the dodgy data in a second. So I had that. I went in to Unity Catalog. I found my particular catalog. I found my particular table. You can see it's got a load of stuff on there because I created these things. So I just went into sales orders, my single table. You can see Unity Catalog coming and trying to write comments for me. I love it. Get rid of that. And I've got this new tab. So I now have a quality tab, which if I didn't have anything set up, would be prompting me. Let's go and see if I've got another, uh, just another random table I can go and create something on. Default, do I have any tables in here? No, let's go and show you something. What have we got? Can I do it in the information schema? Maybe. Yeah, there you go. So if you've not set up quality before, you'll get this kind of, you've not done anything yet. Do you want to actually set up quality? And you click go and you get a, a setup page. So am I doing a snapshot? Just every so often, just do a load of stuff on it. Am I doing time series? So just having a look at data and change over time. Am I looking at the output to my mail model? So just snapshot how often do you want it to run is it checking every hour is it checking every day every week any month again for me it was taking seven minutes to run that query so don't do it every minute um but yeah so weekly it's probably enough to over time see how it's going monthly is probably enough depends what kind of governance you're doing me i just click manual i want to poke a button and say go and then we'll figure it out um where do i want it to keep the tables so those extra tables it made, it's got the drift and it's got the profiling. It doesn't have to go next to your original table. Maybe you've got a whole Unity catalog, catalog and schema and you're putting all of your DQ metrics into that same schema. You don't want your users to see it every time they open up the catalog. So where do you want that to go? For me, it just all went into that kind of main uh, sales silver thing. But you put it wherever you want. And it builds a load of queries. It essentially writes a load of SQL queries that it saves into your profile. Where in the workspace should that go? By default, it's going to put it into my user folder. What's the name of that baseline table? So the baseline table it should be going comparing to. Again, my one, I think I had called something like sales orders base. Okay, we'll go and use the one I've already set up. And then slicing expression. If you wanted to be capturing metrics based on another thing, on another like grouping of things when it was uh, greater than a certain value, less than a certain value, or percentiles, or for every individual value of this one column, capture different stats. So it will actually rerun the queries it's doing for each of those categories. Obviously, that'll take longer. You're going to store more data. So you can add multiple different slicing um, expressions. Plus, you've got these custom metrics. So there's additional things, additional queries you wanted to run, additional things you wanted to measure for each of those expression categories. You can do that in there. Essentially, writing some Python and saying, well, here, here's a query to run on my data frame. Every time you run this, run this query as well and capture these statistics. So, loads 
and loads and loads of stuff you can do inside that custom metrics part. So that's that's essentially what I did. Right, get all that together, hit go, and then it starts setting things up. So if we go into my sales orders table, again, sales orders base is what I set as that baseline table, and these two tables were created automatically once it actually set things up. I can go into quality and I can see some things in here. Again, you can see the configuration that I made. Exactly the same stuff. Sales silver, using sales orders base, it's doing all those things and it goes from there. But then we can see inside here, the refresh schedule. I can go and have a look at the, the refresh history. So I can see I've ran three refreshes. Two of them, it still had that first 500 uh, rows in it. One of them after I inserted a load of rows. We'll have a look at what that looks like. You can see the two tables that are associated. So it's got my profile metrics, my drift metrics. Essentially where it saves the stats so it can show it to me when I open the dashboard. And yeah, that's that's about everything we need. If I wanted to go and trigger a new refresh, again, I can hit that button going, run that query now. That'll take about seven minutes currently. For some reason, seven minutes, 12 minutes, seven minutes. Again, I'm using the tiniest, tiniest possible serverless cluster here. So probably my own fault. Uh, and then the big thing you want to see is what does it actually look like? Well, that is that view dashboard button. So I can just click this and say, show me what my data actually looks like. Show me what my data quality looks like. That's going to start a serverless uh, warehouse. And we should have started earlier, but it's fine. It'll only take a few seconds to start up. And then it's going to give me that stats. So I can see what's actually going on here. So I can see number of columns with a high percentage of nulls the number of columns, uh, number of rows total in my thing. I can see the row count over time. So it started off with just 500 rows. And then actually, oh, that's grown a lot, hasn't it, between my snapshots. Again, this is just a couple of arbitrary snapshots. But this is going to give you your row count statistics as it changes over time. The percentage of zeros and the percentage of nulls as it grows over time. So you can see there's quite a big impact. I previously had zero nulls. I had no null values. And then I've had this massive batch go in. And I've now actually got a fair, fair percentage. There's two columns that have got a high percentage of nulls. That's a problem to go and have a look at that. Uh, data integrity, various different things going on there. I can have a look at different columns to go and see how that's changed. Individual column statistics. So I can say, where, where did all those nulls come from? Oh, 58%. Okay, what's that? My customer ID has gone from having, let's see, I can have a look at my customer ID. So customer ID across my three different snapshots, it was perfect. It was perfect. I've now got 58% of nulls. I've had a big problem come in here and I've suddenly had a load of really dodgy data and he's going to fix something. Again, just measuring this easy stuff over time, it's automatically tracked now that I've turned this thing on. Have a look at column drift, numeric drift, what's the categorization of things. You can see, oh, okay, that's interesting. And it's a quantity. Generally, my quantities is all around smaller numbers and I've got one massive one. So I've got an anomaly. I suddenly have some kind of spike in the distribution of data. I know that because I forced quantities to suddenly have a spike in my data to see if it shows up. Suddenly the distrib distribution of my data goes, yeah, this is fine. And then massive one that's just out there. So a little bit of learning to read this, a little, little bit of learning to actually see what's going on. It's very like data science, data pro profiling, statistical uh, data. See the distribution of my different categories for invoice number. Loads and loads and loads of fairly unique values. It's not particularly great. But if you're doing things like product and things in there, you could see actually are people ordering the same things. Just good data profiling. Not necessarily the thing I would put in front of like a data owner, the data product owner to say, hey, look, the data product that you're in charge of and the features and you've agreed is going to be this good. Here's some actual stats. It's quite data science it's quite heavy in terms of the detail. But this is just the dashboard of how that stuff is actually presented by default. Those two tables are just part of my catalog. I can just pull my own queries out, make my own dashboards out, aggregate queries across all of my different parts of the catalog, and actually go, well, you know, here's all the different profiling metrics across all my different tables, and then provide it that way. It's just the dashboard is how, by default, uh, Unity Catalog is going to give me that data. Yeah, no, I'm pretty impressed, honestly, uh, in terms of just how it goes and how it works. It's only the speed of how long it takes to do that stuff is just a little, little slow for what I've been doing, but is is what it is. And yeah, that's that's about it. So, ton more stuff that you can do on top of it. 
all the extra complexity of defining your own metrics, of looking at the different types of monitoring, time series, or inference, looking at all the extra slicing and things you can do. There's a lot more inside of it. But from a out of the box, I can click a button, and it's just going to regularly tell me has the distribution, has the, the numerical distribution, the categor uh, categorical distribution, the percentage of nulls, the percentage of zeros, the general shape and size of my data. How has that changed over the last n number of pollings that I've done? Just turning that on on a monthly cadence is a huge, huge boon to any data governance, data stewards, data management team. As an engineer, I should know that stuff. I should have been looking at that stuff in terms of my own ETL. I should have built that into any kind of data processing framework I'm delivering. I just don't need to anymore. It's it's just there. It's, it's done. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's about it. That is Lakehouse Monitoring. It went into public preview this week. So if you haven't seen it yet, it's because it's just come out. Uh, it's available in a couple of different regions. It has to be one of the original serverless regions for you to be able to see it. Uh, generally, if you want to try it, you'll be able to just go into Unity Catalog and you'll see that extra quality tab. And then you can just click quality, turn it on, pick a baseline table if you want to compare things to, tell it where to save the results, tell it how often to run it, and your job's done. Loads of things about how you turn it on automatically. What's the best design for where you keep your metrics and do you keep it next to the table? Do you put it in its own schema? Loads of things about when you should and shouldn't baseline. All sorts of design best practices that are worth consideration. But as a basic, here's the tool, this is how it works, click go and it'll work. Pretty darn cool. And you can go and have a play with it if you're in those regions. So yeah, I, I'm excited. I want to see how it actually works in practice. I want to see how many people actually start using it and base all of their data quality metrics and all of their data governance on it. Because actually you can do a huge amount just using that once you've turned it on. I like it, in case you couldn't tell. Anyway, that is all I want to do today. So just have a look at that. Look out for Lakehouse Monitoring. I'll put a link down into the docs uh, below. Check out our Spark Fundamentals training if you just get started with stuff. Give us a shout if we can help you with any of your Lakehouse Analytics AI type journeys. And then, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.